because they seem almost backwards. When I talk about an inverse of a function, I'm going to write, um, if f of x is my function, I'm going to write the inverse with this negative 1 here, and it is very confusing. Now, a lot of students believe that because x to the minus 1, and here how I read that, x to the minus 1 is 1 over x, f inverse is 1 over x, and that's not true. That is not what the inverse is. It's not just a reciprocal. Now, uh, f inverse, okay, is defined so that if a point x, y is a point on the function f, then the point y, x is a point on the inverse of the function. So x and y are trading places. And as a matter of fact, f, evaluated at f inverse of x is equal to x, and this is the key to the definition of the inverse. Now, in order to solve these, the first thing you need to do is replace all occurrences of x with y and all occurrences of y with x. All right. The next thing you need to do is solve your new equation um, for y. All right, and then you need to rename this as f inverse. And then it turns out um, the domain of the inverse is the range of f, and the range of the inverse is the domain of f. Let's do an example. y is 4x plus 5 divided by x minus 1. That's this curve right here. All right. Now the first thing you want to do is replace all occurrences of x with y and y with x. So x is equal to 4y plus 5 divided by y minus 1. Now the next thing you want to do is solve this for y. So x times y minus 1 is equal to 4y plus 5. So xy minus x is 4y plus 5 collect my y terms. So this is, uh, let's see, x minus 4 times y is equal to 5 plus x. So y is x plus 5, I just like my x's first, x minus 4. Now I'm going to say my inverse of x is equal to x plus 5 divided by x minus 4. And that, by the way, is this curve, this dotted curve right here. Now you're going to see that the function and its inverse are always symmetric with respect to this line y equals x. Now let's look at y equals x squared plus 1. Mm -hmm. If I were to solve this, x equals y squared plus 1, so y squared is x minus 1, y is plus or minus the square root of x minus 1. This one is not a function because there are two values for y for every x value. So in order to define an inverse, we would need to restrict our domain of our original function. What about f of x is x cubed minus 1? Well, y is x cubed minus 1. So for every y I put in x and for every x I put in y. So y cubed is x plus 1. So y is the cubed root of x plus 1. All right? So my inverse function is the cubed root of x plus 1. Now for grins and giggles, let's verify that f of f inverse is equal to x. So f is x cubed minus 1. So f of, let's see, f inverse is the cubed root of x plus 1. So everywhere in f, I have an x, I'm going to put it in the cubed root of x plus 1. 
So this is the cubed root of x plus 1 cubed minus 1, which is, let me extend my picture, x plus 1 minus 1, or x. So f of f inverse does equal x. Does f inverse of f equal x? Well, f inverse, you remember my function in this case was, let me go back up so we can see it. My function was x cubed minus 1. So this is x cubed minus 1. So everywhere I have an x in f inverse, I'm going to put x cubed minus 1. So this is the cubed root of x cubed minus 1 plus 1. So this is the cubed root of x cubed or x. So indeed, this is the inverse. Now a lot of times you don't need to actually solve it. Without finding the inverse, find the domain and the range of the inverse of this function, square root of x plus 2 plus 3. Let's look at my original function. The domain is from negative 2 to positive infinity. And the range is from positive 3 to infinity. So if I want the inverse, I literally swap these. The domain becomes 3 to infinity. You see I didn't have to solve this. And the range is from negative 2 to infinity.